Hi, welcome to Gemstone Tarot. Thursday the 8th of August. Oh my God. 2019. Okay, I've just trimmed my fringe with some kitchen scissors. This is something I do, I don't know why. And uh, in honour of that, we're using Tarot of the Old Path. Okay, because there's a funky fringe or two in Tarot of the Old Path. It's a very nice set, actually. I don't know. I think it's 90s. I'm not 100% sure, so don't quote me on that. I wonder if it's got the date on it. 1990. I'm feeling pretty cool. Okay. It's a beautiful um, borderless tarot. But it does have some fruity haircuts. So Hedgehog, haven't seen it for a couple of days. Don't know what that means. Maybe he's found a food source elsewhere. There is plenty around. Um, we will see. I will keep you updated. Well, for all I know, he's been swinging in silently in the cat flap and helping himself to some shreddings or whatever, and I've got no idea. But as far as I know, haven't seen him for a couple of days. Now, blooming heck, okay. <laughs> Before I shuffled these cards, I looked in the Moon Diary. I've been tempted to do this recently. I'm just making work for myself, but I am anyway. And I've been looking at what the Moon is in on the days that we're doing the dailies, okay? Because that kind of makes sense. And then I thought to myself, mm, you know, don't fully 100% understand the Moon, if I'm honest but I kind of get its intuitive influence. So I then said to myself, well, if it comes up as one of the major arcana, I'll mention it. And of course it has. We have the moon in Scorpio. This is in the UK. I can't say what happens in the rest of the world. Obviously, you know, you get those moon apps for your phone, don't you? And that tells you where it is at certain times. And then you can get my moon app, which I don't know which one it is. I think it's just called Moon, which is that one that just randomly sends you a notification when there's like a specifically significant moon so on the leo new moon at about midnight it went bing and it does this really spooky notification bing like this a bit spookier than that and it just said dude i like literally never sleep <laughs> and it woke me up as well i was like thank you very much moon so anyway you can get your own moon apps there's loads of different ones so, uh, Thursday the 8th, Moon is in Scorpio, then it moves into Sagittarius. And I did think before I started the reading, that's going to be significant. And then I thought, I don't want to balls up the astrology, so I won't mention it. But full disclosure, I'm mentioning it. Even if I do balls up the astrology, you'll know what it means. So, yeah. Hmm. Now for me, when Scorpio moves to Sagittarius, you get that death card, which we have on the table. There's a certain sense, oh my God. There's a certain sense of things needing to um, move on and expand. If you think about Scorpio and Pluto and kind of all that deep Scorpionic, whatever it is, and then you think about Jupiter and expansion and Sagittarius and philosophy and expression. We're moving from that to that, but there's some sense of clinging on to something. Definitely a sense of clinging on to an illusion. I forgot how much I love. Oh my God. Okay. <clears throat> Spiritual big jobs, people. Spiritual big jobs. Let's focus. Right, <laughs> okay, let's deal with this card first, considering I thought it might come up. The death card, which is Scorpio, in the reverse. A sense of not wanting to let go of something, not wanting to transition into the next phase of something. Okay. Next to it, and let me just strategically place my finger to preserve her modesty because it's one of those 90s let it all hang out decks, you know. We have the world, okay? 
and the world is Ouroboros, the snake that eats itself, in my end is my beginning, it's the new and the old, it's kind of a new cycle and an old cycle closing out <clears throat> and I feel we may be moving between clinging on, pshht, letting go and learning, okay? Now as if that wasn't enough, I'm going to have to look that up. The only trouble with this deck, okay, and I would say this if you're buying a tarot deck, it's something to look out for, is that the numbers on the Major Arcana are different and the names of the cards are different as well. So for example, death is called the close, but you got the Grim Reaper, so you can kind of work it out. And also death is always 13, that's quite axiomatic to me. Then you get illusion, which I think... I have no idea. I'm going to look it up in my tarot bible. So there's illusion. It's a gorgeous card. I think it's the moon, isn't it? Strange thing to call it though, isn't it? Let's whip out the tarot bible. It's going to be one of those days. This I fully recommend to anyone because no matter what you're using, this is like a kind of, you know, bread and potatoes, meat and potatoes, whatever and potatoes of tarot. So let's look up, 18 is the moon, I don't know why I'm doubting myself, but I'm feeling a bit doughty, yep it's the moon, okay, <clears throat> so it's called illusion, very much as they say, illusion in reverse, moon in reverse, okay moon in reverse is letting go of illusions, sometimes we want to cling on to an illusion because it's comfortable and it you know, we're only human and life is a bit rough and you don't want to actually acknowledge that something is what it is. But you're being encouraged to do so. And when I say encouraged, I might mean forced, okay? <laughs> because we've got death in reverse, moon in reverse, the world. I mean, that's pretty major arcanatastic, isn't it? It's not even daily reading this. This is a bigger reading than that. And then we have the tower in reverse. Now the tower, of course, is designed to bring down the edifice, the denial, whatever it is. When it's in reverse, there is a certain sense of not wanting it to come down. It's like, no, just stay up. I don't care if it's shonky bricks and all the mortars falling out. We'll just keep it there. Let's keep it this way. Shh, shh, shh. La, la, la. It's like that, okay? There is a need to square up to something. There is a need to come out of hiding. We've got the wise one, which of course is the hermit. And for me, it's Radagast, one of my favorite characters of all time. Cause he's a man who's housing rabbits in his cloak. Yeah, I know, it sounds a bit dodgy, but it is a gorgeous rendition of the hermit. This card is in the reverse. I love, I absolutely love I, don't, I think I've mentioned before, if I'm buying a tarot pack, I look at the Hermit and the Seven of Swords. Usually the best artwork is the Hermit and the Seven of Swords. Hermit's in reverse. Some of you took a huge um, knock from something and you went into hiding, which is fair enough because July was a bit... And it's time to kind of come out, but it's a bit kicking and screaming, okay? Don't be fooled though, there are nice things on offer. We've got the Six of Pentacles. It can be a rebate, a bag of cash, a gift. It can be someone being kind, paying it forward, whatever it is, don't knock it back. It's sweet, okay? In the middle of the reading, the Queen of Swords in the reverse. This gives me the notion that it might not be time to be... Um, Sometimes when we're coming out and it's like a tower thing and it's a death thing and it's a disappointment thing, we feel spiky and it's off with his head thing, you know, off with her head. It's that whole, I will put up my boundaries and my defences and I will, you know, keep control of this situation. You probably won't, to be honest. You know, sometimes we don't and it's just really messy. Sometimes it's a bit embarrassing and sometimes it's just wasn't meant to be queen of cups 
the queen of what will be will be she has a peach that's rather nice i think it's a peach i think when she's wearing that dress it's t.s Eliot again alfred j prefrock there's a line in there where he says i grow old i grow old i wear the bottom of my trousers rolled and then he says dare i eat a peach and you think oh my god you know does there come a point where you have to kind of assess fruit for the decorum of how you would eat it let it slop down your chin you know and in that dress that would take a lot of dry cleaning wouldn't it mm, just saying but she doesn't care because she's the queen of cups the queen of cups can kind of let all this flow there is a certain sense of flow with the world oiraboros the renewal and think about death renewal the moon all of that stuff in cycles I'm just doing a cycle, but it kind of looks like some kind of weird, bad Tai Chi. Just think of it in terms of a renewal of sorts. It might be uncomfortable, um, particularly if it's to do with a romantic situation. It probably is really uncomfortable. But it is a good thing in the end, OK? Let's have Wisdom of the Hidden Realms. Wisdom. Of the hidden realms. I knew we were going to get that. This is one of those days where I can't get my words together. I'm cutting my fringe with some kitchen scissors, but I know what cards are coming up before they come out. Can't make sense of those days, can you? You're not supposed to, I don't think. Yeah. The phoenix, of course. What else is going to come up? I know. The phoenix. Resurrection. Surrender to change. Not even taking a healing with the angels card because that reading is complete. Please do leave me a comment about that and also have a look at your August readings, which are all up. And um, yeah, I'll see you soon. <laughs> Namaste.